Welcome back to Revved Up for Sunday, everyone. We are the clergy of St. Mark's Episcopal Church in New Canaan, Connecticut. I'm Elizabeth Garnsey. I'm Peter Walsh. And I'm John Kennedy. And if you didn't think Matthew 10 was an important chapter in the gospel, you're wrong. This is our third installment of this same chapter, third week in a row, proper eight, fifth Sunday after Pentecost. And this will fall on Independence Day weekend. Uh, this is the passage, Matthew 10, 40 to 42, and it wraps up the mission, so-called mission discourse, where Jesus is sending out his disciples and telling them to raise the dead, heal the sick, and find a nice place to stay and be welcoming while you're at it. So let's hear the text, Matthew 10, 40 to 42. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we just saved several minutes on the podcast by having, <laughs> uh, you know, essentially three sentences come our way versus right. so many of the long long portions of the discourse. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting, as we've spent three weeks in this, uh, for me to think about the last piece of the passage here mm -hmm. in light of some of the previous conversations we had. You can't read any of this without uh, thinking of the whole of the discourse, and this is the culmination of that discourse. And I think that uh, as I pondered it, what I really came to think of it as a little bit like the Didache, that early mm -hmm. uh, Christian document that, as you said, didn't make it into the New Testament. You had it on the short list, just got cut and put down into the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. But that, that, that was a Christian instruction manual, a kind of a Christian handbook. And I think that the more I hear this, the more I think that that's exactly what Matthew is putting together as mm -hmm. a Christian handbook, mm -hmm. that he has taken these miscellaneous uh, sayings of Jesus, many of them miscellaneous, many from the Q source, and and refashioning them in in this uh, missionary discourse, in this sending out of the disciples. But the reason I think of it more and more as a Christian handbook is it's not just about the sending out, it's about how the community is to receive people. So mm -hmm. a lot of what today we get is the reception, not the sending out. Mm -hmm. And I did a little word study just in the, in the, uh, in the passage we just read, whoever, which starts down uh, in the previous three verses, but we hear whoever five times, eight times mm -hmm. if we include the previous yeah. uh, list of whoever's, welcome mm -hmm. in the this passage is used six times, receives is used eight times, uh, and that me is used three times and reward three times. And so you get something like, what the heck does this mean? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there, who is worthy to receive me and welcomes me receives this reward. Yeah. Yeah. It is really interesting. I mean, it's, it's almost like a Johannine passage, the way it's so circular and repetitive. Yeah. Good um, call. Yeah, and it's a little slightly cryptic. I mean, what's a prophet's reward other than usually being killed for for your words? Um, and you know, too. I don't know that that's a very straightforward uh, enticement. I mean, either of you, have, what is this reward? We're never told what oh. the reward is. Earlier in this passage, earlier in this discourse, Jesus says, uh, "Everyone." Who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And later in the gospel, in the famous Matthew 25, the separation of the sheep from the goats, the sort of great judgment scene, uh, which is good news for those who um, are kind and, and act justly in the world, especially towards those who are in need, and uh, very bad news for those who neglect um, the, the needy and vulnerable um, and, and marginalized. Uh, anyway, uh, the reward there is very much, you know, being ingathered into the heavenly kingdom, into, into um, sort of some sort of eschatological life mm -hmm. um, in the kingdom with God. Um, so in other words, Jesus is not talking about, you know, you'll get money, you'll get a car. Mm -hmm. There's no prosperity gospel undertones here of any kind mm -hmm. uh, to be found. Um, uh, this, these are not earthly rewards. Mm -hmm. I think also we, we can recall like ancient hospitality culture and first century hospitality culture was so different than what we live in. Um, and also the Hebrew Bible references that, that maybe the first readers of Matthew would have in mind, like 
the story of Elijah and the widow where he goes to her house and she's not exactly showing hospitality because she's sort of like forced into, I mean, she can't really say no, but he, he says, I'm coming into your house. But she does receive him and he wants her last drop of oil and her last grain of flour for bread and she's about to starve with her son. But because she, she does what he tells her, she makes the last loaf of bread before they're all gonna die and, of starvation. And then it turns out the oil never runs out, the, the flour never runs out, and he raises her child from the dead, mm-hmm. so, or saves him from dying. Um, so maybe that's a prophet's reward, Could you know, be, being, yeah. receiving the prophet in the name of the prophet. Um, and then, of course, like the righteous person in the name of a righteous person. I don't know why, but I sort of think of Abraham and the mm-hmm. visitors mm-hmm. at Namre, and he just hustles out to greet these strange visitors on the road and turns out to be sort of a presence of God. Um, yeah, I think you're, a- a- amen to, the, I love the two uh, examples you've chosen there. They're great, great biblical examples. I think that, uh, you know, one of the things we need to grab a hold on to is just that, relatively speaking, in the United States, as we are wildly inhospitable mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And that uh, in the Middle East today, hospitality is a core value. I think I've told this story mm-hmm. on some of mm-hmm. these podcasts in the poor. Back when my oldest son, Sam, was working uh, in Doha, and uh, we arrived after essentially being awake for 24 hours, and Sam said, you can't go to sleep because the hospitality rights are such that these people want to greet the the honored elders. And so, uh, and he also said, because you're, we're Westerners, they're going to think that you want to drink, and so they're going to, they're going to give you very expensive champagne. Wow. And all, all I want to do was go to sleep and mm-hmm. maybe have a glass of water. And, mm-hmm. and so this hospitality ethos was a major core value mm-hmm. in Jesus' day. And I'll just say, in many parts of the Middle East, it remains so today. So mm-hmm. you actually could not turn down somebody coming to your home mm-hmm. that, and, uh, in, in, in Jesus' day. The issue here is, what are you to do with them? And, and that, that funny line that Didache that I spoke about recently where it said, you are to receive everybody for a day, mm-hmm. two days maybe, but on the third day, they're for sure a false yeah. prophet, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and the Didache goes on Love to say, that. you don't give them any money. The only time you yeah. give them money if it's money for mm-hmm. the poor. Mm-hmm. And so this is, this is the context of this, mm-hmm. which yeah. is, how, do yeah. they, how are they to moderate this kind of hospitality in a world where philosophical teachings, theological teachings are taught by, by itinerant mm-hmm. teachers. Mm-hmm. And that's what this, the gospel is a send gospel of itinerant teachers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, for those who, who might have missed the last two episodes or the, or the last two Sundays hearing these gospels, this, it's the ending of, of a whole story that actually begins with this theme of welcoming and ends with the theme of welcoming. And, mm. um, and in it, Jesus is telling the disciples, you know, you're going to send you out, you're going to heal the sick, raise the dead, you know, and things like that. And then, you know, find a nice place to stay. And he, mm-hmm. all the instructions is, are about how to find the welcoming home. None of it is how to raise the dead or how to cure mm-hmm. the sick. Mm-hmm. It's like, mostly you have to focus on welcoming and being welcomed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? interesting. And there's yeah. so much instruction yeah. here. Um, so I find that really, really fascinating and to me, that kind of boils down to the fact that it, that it's so important to Jesus, this practice of hospitality, how we welcome the little ones, how we yeah, welcome the marginalized. Yeah. So at first, he's telling them how they're going to be welcomed or not, how to recognize a welcoming place, and not to waste your time if the people are not That's right. worthy, as Shake he says. The dust. Mm-hmm. Um, and move on. But it's really important to like to establish that kind of a relationship of hospitality, and then in turn at the end of this path where we are today, um, this is how you welcome. You welcome as if it's me and it is me, you know, mm-hmm. you are me right. and the, and who right. you receive is also me. So yeah. it's really a bottom line. That's pretty. Concrete. Yeah. That's what I was coming in with the instruction manuals, the, the, mm-hmm. the stuff here. Interestingly, just to point out in, in Matthew's gospel, the way Matthew has configured it, they're not actually sent out in a way that we ever hear what happened, right? right. So we get no the sending news. of the yeah. 70 and stuff like that in Luke's gospel. But here right. we just get the instructions. And then it says in, I think, verse 11, 1, that Jesus went on and, mm-hmm. you know, taught and healed. Yeah. But, uh-huh. we don't, right. you know, we just get the instructions. We don't find out how, to, how well did it go. And we don't mm-hmm. anywhere else. Right? In Luke, we get 
uh, in Luke, we do. Back, we, we in saw Luke, Satan, we get. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus saw Satan yeah. fall like lightning. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. Um, yeah, the Didache, um, uh, I, I, I love that connection. I had a note on the Didache as well uh, about how um, there is guidelines or guidance for discerning true from false prophets as, as uh, Peter brought up. So in other words, um, there is discernment uh, in, in the exercise of a hospitality uh, encouraged uh, on the part of those who might uh, uh, welcome um, prophets and, and apostles and so on. So um, uh, interesting to see this, this tension navigated between, um, you know, radical welcome hospitality um, and the potential for the abuse of that. Mm, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, know. certainly abuse is part of this. I mean, we get the cost of discipleship and mm -hmm. we get the reward of discipleship, right? And the I mean, risk. You know, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to divide your family. Mm -hmm. It's got all kinds of bad things are going to happen. It's going to cost you your life. I mean, the cost mm -hmm. of discipleship in here is family division, suffering, and life itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. you got to give up your life in order That's to right. gain your life, right? right? And then what do you get? Well, you get these rewards yeah. guaranteed by Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that comes out of the way Jesus sends them out to be very vulnerable. You know, he's like, don't take provisions. No don't shoes. take too many clothes. <laughs> you know, not John even money. John keeps coming back to the shoes. Know, it's it's shoes. astonishing. <laughs> I know. It's incredible. Especially because Mark says you can take shoes. <laughs> right. It's very confusing. It is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd like you to pursue that in a book. Yeah. The war yeah. of the suitcases. Shoes or no shoes. Right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think there... There is a lot to be said for that because it, in, in the spiritual terms, it's this, you know, divestment from material gain yeah. or material motivation or, you know, you can't like buy your way into someone's home or um, coerce their hospitality. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, they go in completely detached and they don't go in as, you know, ambassador from, you know, such and yeah. such place. It's they're going as disciples of Jesus mm -hmm. alone. That's it with God. And it's also interesting to me that throughout this whole chapter, it's it's only chapter 10. It's not like the book of Acts where Jesus has died and raised and gone to heaven and given right. them the Holy Spirit. It's like they've heard the Sermon on the Mount. They've watched Jesus heal and teach and even raise the dead. But it's the middle of the, the gospel, and he's already saying to them, you know, don't worry about what you're going to say. The spirit will of your father will be speaking through mm -hmm. you. So, like, he's already giving them the Holy Spirit throughout yeah. their yeah. time with him. And I just, it's only in our pod, you know, through the studies those last three weeks that I've kind of realized that. Um, yeah, interesting. You're right. You're yeah. Right. I mean, he, but he gives them his authority, right? That's the word that's yeah. used in there. But the spirit, it, it, he says, yeah. the spirit of your father will speak through you. And, and... Uh, but I think the interesting thing is if you see it, I think there's many interesting things. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, but, mm -hmm. you know, we have the senders and now we have the receivers. And then is there also a, a third portion of this, which is the sender and the receiver together. Mm -hmm. And so when the sender and the receiver come together, uh, new boundaries are broken down and a new community begins to arise because mm -hmm. somebody has been sent and somebody received. I mean, they can only exercise this authority in any meaningful way in a household that receives them. Mm -hmm. But it's right. in the receiving of the household that a new thing can be born. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the, the, this whole matter of how authority uh, works, how community is formed in, in this world, and, and, and Peter, as, as you were saying, in, in some parts of the world still today, um, it's fascinating to me because, you know, I live, we live in, in a society where, you know, you need credentials, you need money, mm -hmm. status of some sort. I mean, you know, nobody would listen to, I couldn't work here if I didn't have, you know, a master of divinity and, <laughs> you know, a, a, a ordination in the Episcopal church and that mm -hmm. whole process. Uh, and, um, you know, so many of our, our relationships and, 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 American and, and Western and Westernized uh, society are, are based on, on money and um, connections. And, yeah. Established, you mm -hmm. know, government things, business, et cetera. They had nothing <laughs> zero <laughs> with regards to any of that. As far as I mm -hmm. am aware, it's all based on um, this charism, this, this holy charisma, not like, mm -hmm. you know, um, Tony Robbins charisma, but like, you know, the charisma of like human connection, Mm -hmm. No offense to Tony Robbins, but um, not to, I don't think the apostles were like that. Um, <laughs> Paul might have been a little like that. <laughs> I don't know about Maybe Tony Peter. Robbins, but yeah, yeah, I had to take a look at that to, to hear these. I was thinking about Tony Robbins because taking around slogans, right? Yeah. Potential slogans. Uh, and he says, <laughs> raise your standard. 
Oh wow, that's good. So, um, well, yeah, Jesus certainly raises right. the standard. There's there's some yeah. standard I mean, raising. Well, this is raised Jesus's standard. Yeah. That's, that's right. what this. Well, is. Right. so coming back to yeah. this this challenge for me of of um, of this word spreading without any sort of established. Um, uh, uh, you know, there's no institution, there's no money, there are no credentials. Uh, it's just person to person stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a challenge to me to, to, to remember that um, that's really the best way to, to live this out and to draw people into it and mm-hmm. uh, not lean on um, the trappings of, of the institution, even if we might need them, mm-hmm. um, not, to, um, not to identify with them and not to depend on them any more than is necessary, especially not at the expense of, of this real on the ground, basic kind of primal, like, will, will you let me into your home? Well, I have something I want to talk to you about. You know, it's changed my life. I think it can change yours too. Mm-hmm. Um, really important to have that fire mm-hmm. going. Yeah, we don't really go door to door in our in our culture, in, at least in our tradition, our church tradition. Um, so I think for us, you know, to bring this home to us, um, you know, what is our message? What's our, how do we live out you know, welcoming these little ones. I mean, we could interpret that in all kinds of ways. It's not just little children, but it's anyone, you know, to me, anyone in need, anyone on the margins, you know, little in the sense of no power or little voice or Mm -hmm. little um, resources or whatever little that when we have much, you know. And I think as as an institution, as, you know, humans openly Christian out in the world. I mean, however we receive others is literally, I mean, according to this, it's literally how we receive Jesus Mm. and how we regard others as the presence of Christ in the world. And, um, I think that that is a little sobering when we, when I think of this, a slogan, like raise your standards. I mean, it's so hard not to judge people by what they're wearing, what they smell like, what they look like, where they come from, what they say, what they believe, mm-hmm. you know, what they've done, what they might do. You know, I mean, it's super hard to not just come with a whole armload of judgment and yeah. be cautious and build a higher wall, have a security camera, mm-hmm. you know, more locks on your doors. It's like mm-hmm. really, really interesting to kind of it examine is. our culture against that, that radical hospitality that Jesus is calling yeah. us into. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I think in the context of here that, uh, again, Matthew takes uh, takes little ones as it was in uh, manifested in some of the other Gospels, but changes it. I think the little ones here refer to the 12 apostles uh, and that then yeah, to the Methean right. community are little ones. And now the little ones are, are, are Jesus followers now. And, and that what Jesus is talking about is the vulnerability of going out into community. So this is not, I mean, this is a missionary discourse. This is not come in and join our church and be like us. This is to go out into, as you were saying, to go out into the world. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but that there are vulnerabilities in that because you will be rejected. We're already told that. And, and, but, it, and, but you also be embraced. Again, mm-hmm. this is the cost and the reward of things. Mm-hmm. And, and what Jesus is is calling on us as, I mean, or how are we to interpret this now, part of Elizabeth, what you were talking about here. And now we would say that our service is of the, you know, the little, I mean, Jesus uses the term little ones or it gets banged around in different ways. I mean, mm-hmm. he used it as children, right? In, mm-hmm. in Mark and Luke, little ones are children. Mm-hmm. And right. he says this, and not in Mark, but in Luke, he says this to the kingdom of God is, mm-hmm. you have to be like a little child. Mm-hmm. And, and he calls so, his disciples little children. Little children too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is, this yeah. isn't, this is a phrase of affection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think yeah. that what you get here in the missionary discourse is you get Jesus. And so if you go to the, the lines 37 to 39, before we get to 40 to 42, the word me is used over and over and over. Those mm-hmm. you, who are worthy of me, worthy of me, worthy of me, mm-hmm. that what you get is Jesus. And I, I think that's the interesting thing about Christianity is Jesus. I just don't think the church is that interesting. Mm-hmm. No offense uh, the, the, for the institution that all three of us are devoting our whole life mm-hmm. to the most interesting thing is Jesus. And that's what Jesus is saying. You and we're the most me. interesting when we're imitating Jesus. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. when we're in that line, that Johan yeah. line right mm-hmm. here, you know, mm-hmm. father, son, and us. That's right. 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 Yeah. It's only a scandal when we're like selecting who, who's welcome. Yeah, we are super not, not interesting you know? on our own. Mm-hmm. Oh right. My oh my God. 
Yeah, don't get me started. Um, <laughs> John, yeah. this podcast is about getting you started. I know. Yeah, on certain things. Right, right. Yeah, on some things, and less on others. But uh, I, I do want to talk about because um, it's a, a real question for me that I, you know, am processing. Um, this is Jesus sending the apostles out to um, spread the good news in a sense of like, I assume Jesus is the Messiah, sort of thing. Um, you know. Uh, this is how to be the people of God. Uh, uh, this is how to be a true Israelite. You know, gather around Jesus like you're used to gathering around the temple. Um, you know, we, we live in, in a, a world of, of uh, Christendom and post-Christendom and all of that. And um, I don't really believe that that, um, that sort of proselytizing, let's just call it that for, for simplicity's sake, um, is, is the way to spread the good news in today's world. Um, and then often that that line of thinking just stops there and it's like, okay, so I'm not going to do anything. You know, we talked mm-hmm. about evangelism. I don't really know if we know how to do it. I mean, I don't know if I know how to do it. I won't generalize beyond me. But, um, yeah, I don't know how to actually uh, uh, live this out in a way that makes sense now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what, what do you think I, about I, this? I think you do. I mean, I think it's just do the work. You know, we're supposed to be... Um, making space for people to experience God, you know, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. be a place where people have the possibility of encountering love and, and embrace and safety and, you know, a harbor from the world's incredible violence and Mm -hmm. and terror and um, dysfunction, you know? And I mean, and, and Thomas Keating, one of his great lines before he died, he said, the time has come for conversation, not conversion, mm-hmm. you know, and just to learn and experience the other and to understand who they are and see the image of God in them in them, and humble ourselves as little ones, you know, to, yeah, to yeah. know we don't know everything. And we certainly don't know everything about God and what God is like, um, but to just do the work. Like, I mean... It's hard to do that, mm-hmm. but it I, I think yeah. that we, we know how it's just like, um, how do we do it without being afraid? Yeah, I, I think that, thank you for that, each of you for that. I, I think that one of the, the, the primary issues is just authenticity. And nobody follows anybody nowadays that they don't believe yeah. is authentically who yeah. they are. And that whether or not they're people of color like us or whether or not they're, you know, lay people that 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 to follow Jesus and for people to come to know that you're a Jesus follower is seeking to live the way of love and that and that you're vulnerable and goofed up like the rest of us that 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 and then the, to do the work to do the best you can do I mean I think for local parish clergy the thing to do is is to you know to bring as best you can the content of Jesus forward and mm-hmm. to create a community to help the spirit create a community mm-hmm. of love that where Jesus can be caught and taught mm-hmm. and that uh, and that we always know that it's a team undertaking that none of us are we, none of us are people we don't convert anybody we don't convert one person the spirit if the, someone is to finds their heart warmed it's warmed by grace and not by us mm-hmm. yeah. i mean our yeah. personality alone ain't worth nothing uh, and I think the in the second way to think about this is is the way that missionaries are understood nowadays has even gone under a tremendous revolution and evolution mm-hmm. where instead of going out and bringing the truth and converting people and and squashing whatever they had before that now we understand a great mutuality as as Christian missionaries go out. One of my my closest friends, you know, lives in a, the tribal peoples, um, the Salish and the Kootenai peoples, who are converted uh, to Christianity by the Jesuits. They they did terrible things to these people to convert them to Christ, and now these people live in a in a way in which they have their native religiosity and their their deep devotion to Jesus all wrapped together. Mm-hmm. And for people who, uh, you know. During my, you know, basically 30 years outside of seminary, uh, the the movement has been for those who would 
go to far off places to being Jesus, they find that the, 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 the spirit of God is already there mm -hmm. and that the missionary learns as much as the missionary gives. And so it's mm -hmm. all this mutuality. And, and, and even in this discourse here, we might find that there's, as I said earlier, the, 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 the sender and the receiver, it, the, the sender's thing only becomes realized when the receiver receives it, mm -hmm. but that that's not just one way stream. It's, it's togetherness. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit, you know, what mm -hmm. you were talking about yeah. conversion. I like what Thomas Keating said. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, it's very yeah good. we have so God much. God rest to his soul too. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, uh, if, if do you have any last words or further topics to explore? Otherwise, we can um, bring this one to a close and send people out to explore so. for themselves <laughs> <laughs> and welcome one another in the name of Christ. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's so great to be here again, episode 101. And uh, we wish you a holy and happy Independence Week and um, blessings on your study of the gospel. Join us soon. Like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. It helps us a lot. Bye-bye.